I'm going to dive right in and start because I've only got 20 minutes and normally I take way longer doing this presentation. Um, so I'm Richard Brown. I'm the chairman of the OpenSUSE project and I'm, I'm here to, to sort of talk to you about why I think rolling releases are the, the future of all software delivery, in particular Linux distributions. Um, to, you know, ultimately the question that any software developer wants to answer is how best to deliver software to users, you know, what, you know, how to get it in the hands of users so they can run around and play with the software. In the beginning, years ago, you know, we always were delivering software, you know, via apps, you know, you need some way of, some way of dealing with it, you know, apps, services, some way of getting your software out there and, you know, consumed by the users. When it comes to open source software, though, the entire world is moving faster and faster and faster and more diversely. You know, the kernel every three months, GNOME every six months, Plasma, you know, it's just going quicker and quicker. And that leads to some very interesting questions or very interesting problems. Because, you know, as a Linux distribution, you want to take all of these, you know, a decent cross section of all these different upstream projects and you want to put them in one consistent, you know, condensed bundle of this is what you should be using that should all somehow work together, it should all be operational, it should be consistent and coherent. And that's thousands of moving parts. And to sort of make this a sane proposition, to kind of make this something that you can manage, most Linux distributions take the approach of regular releases. You know, every distribution typically you know, d did this or does this. Where, you know, releasing every X months or years, freezing and the, or very reluctantly upgrading once they've released, so you know, just keeps everything on the same version. Quite often that involves backporting patches and fixes and features to those frozen bits. And you know, it's, it's the traditional way of doing things. It's the Debian way, it's the Fedora way. We do it with OpenSUSE and OpenSUSE Leap, and it's the Ubuntu way of doing things. But you can't develop on that. It's too frozen. You've got everything stuck in this certain version bit. So most of these traditional rolling re regular releases have a development branch of some kind, um, which is you know always released, latest version of everything. You know, just pipe git head to whatever packaging system you've got, and there you go. Nothing's frozen or backported. It's always the latest and greatest from every developer everywhere, which means it's normally broken. Um, and this is the true state of you know, Debbie and Sid and Rawhide and most of these, you know, development branches. Um, you know, Ubuntu have Ubuntu daily and I've actually never seen a daily boot ever. Um, and this, this, is a, this is a problem for developers. Um, you know, upstream ones as well, but even ones inside distributions because you want to be seeing what is the latest state of everything new and you need to be able to do your work. If you see everything that's new and broken, you still don't have a platform for doing your work on. So then you have no developers using it, and yeah, you know, it actually ends up getting stale and stagnant and rather messy, which becomes a real problem for distributions because that is our lifeblood. We need our developers and our contributors to be working on improving the distribution and the whole stack as a whole. So if no one's using it, you're not finding any bugs, you're not putting new features into your code base, and quite often, you end up having this kind of nasty mess of cruft that just means technical debt gets worse and worse and worse until you eventually have your regular release come along and you try and flush it all out at the last minute. You end up delaying your release, which is something that most regular releases do with some frequency these days. Um, and over time, the entire project starts feeling more stagnant, starts declining. It just doesn't work. And it doesn't work from a sort of upstream development perspective. You know, if, if you're an application developer or a stack developer like GNOME, you want to get your hands, you have software in the hands of users fast. Distributions are months behind you. They're always going to be months behind you with that model. The dev branches might just about be able to keep up, but they're not working half the time, so you can't rely on them. And, and containerized apps, so stuff like Flatpak, do try to solve this but it's not that easy, and that's the topic of my talk on Sunday, so I won't spoil it. And it's also a problem for users, this sort of regular release development branch model. Because the enthusiastic ones want to see all this latest new stuff. They're excited about the open source world. They're excited about the latest software. 
they don't want to wait, but they're not willing to accept something that's broken, or even if it works, they're not willing to accept something that's kind of crusty or a little bit rough around the edges. They want that well put together feeling. They want polished user experience. Those are the key requirements. And we need to engage with these people to make them the developers of tomorrow. They need to be, you know, we need to take that enthusiasm, excitement, and really pipe it into something that, you know, is tangible where they can get some work done. And this is the problem that, yeah, I think every regular release model, especially when you look at it in Linux distributions, really, really suffers from. It just doesn't quite fit for appealing to our key demographic, our key target audience, these enthusiastic users. And this is why I think rolling releases really are you know, the savior of this problem, far more than any other technology out there at the moment. Um, for those who don't know what I'm talking about when I say a rolling release, it is a uh, delivering your software without a release schedule, you know, frequently updating whatever's in your stack. So in the case of a distribution, every single package in your distribution. Updating them whenever they're ready. And that becomes your cr key criteria, defining ready in a way that really suits you and your target audience. And the kind of key examples, Arch, Gentoo, and of course, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. And when I start talking about ro rolling releases, I always have people come back to me saying, ah, oh, yeah, but they're always unstable, or they're unreliable, or they're hard to live with. Um, in the case of unstable, you know, what is, what is stability anyway? For the sake of this discussion, I'm referring to it as something that's always changing. You know, I'm a user, I just want to use the system, I don't want to have to learn a new way of doing things. Rolling releases will always be changing. You know, it is a fast-moving code base. It's the point. But they do, you know, you need to make sure you're delivering your rolling release in a way where it's being built consistently, it's being tested consistently, and it's being integrated consistently. And if you do that, you have a way of delivering your software at a ridiculously fast pace. But you need to make sure that those users are shielded from behavioral changes, in, you know, that... They can, so they can just focus on doing, you know, getting their work done. That might mean taking a very conservative approach to things like API and API changes or UX changes, or you know, I can talk about, I'll talk about it in Tumbleweed in a minute, having technologies where users can actually define the pace of change that you know, they consume their software with. When it comes to being unreliable, in this case, always breaking, you know, it, is a, it is a significant challenge with a rolling release, especially a, a rolling release Linux distribution, because you have thousands of moving parts from thousands of different upstream projects, and you know, with obvious exceptions like GNOME, thousands of very stupid upstream projects half the time, um, and they're not going to be able to you know, provide you something that's going to work easily. Need, adjustments need to be made, changes need to be put together, you need to build, test, and you know, integrate it all consistently again, and one lesson that we learned in OpenSUSE with this is you need to start thinking as about the full stack, about the full product. T testing just the change doesn't, isn't good enough. You need to test this at the submission and test at the whole. So test the commit and test the entire product at the whole stack. Because at ultimately, end of the day, you cannot ship something to your users that doesn't work. And it a lot of distributions, including two of the three that I mentioned about rolling, rely totally on passive testing. This concept of there's been some new submission from upstream, we've packaged it, we've put it in some testing branch somewhere, and if no one complains in two weeks, it's good enough, we'll ship it. It doesn't work. It's always going to be Russian roulette. If you have a bigger community, you've got more, you know, more chambers in the gun, but still someone is going to get shot sooner or later. You need to have active testing. You need to be you know, doing continuous integration, but not just at a quality control level, but actually quality assurance, making sure the product works as it's meant to work. Which means you need to be confirming, does the package break something in isolation? Does it, you know, does it work on its own? Does it work when you do it as this whole product? And ideally, you also want to be aware of, does this actually change the way the user is going to have to use the application? Has a menu system changed? Has, you know, does the workflow change on the installer? You need to have tools to actually answer that, ideally, before the upstream is actually released the upstream project, um, which is a really fun challenge, or at least as fast as possible as you can afterwards. Even when you've got all of that bit sorted and you're you know, delivering your software, 
rolling releases have this reputation of being hard to live with. Um, you know, in the case of Arch, they make it a selling point. They have the Arch way, which is, you know, do it yourself. It's a learning exercise. The Gen 2 way isn't as well defined, but I've tried my best to define it there. Um, and in fact, I have every Gen 2 guy I've told that joke to actually agrees with me, which I find even more funny. Um, you know, it's, you know, it can be a hard thing to do, you know, but that's a problem that's actually solvable. You can do a rolling release in a way that doesn't have to be hard, you know, hard to live with. Who said rolling releases need to be difficult? In OpenSUSE, we have Tumbleweed. It's a relatively old project now, started back in 2014, originally by, by Greg Crow Hartman. Um, and today, it provides a rolling release, you know, as I described, latest of everything, it always works, tested continuously, aiming for those enthusiastic users who will be the developers of tomorrow. It didn't start that way. 2014, we made most of the mistakes I was talking about. It wasn't consistently built. We had a stable distribution underneath, and we built it as a rolling stack of stuff on top. One of the things we put in that rolling stack on top was always GNOME, and there was constant problems with that, because GNOME would move along at its full pace, which meant we eventually had to change something in that lower stack. We've created a Frankensuse. It was always a mess. And then we would eventually reset to zero when there's a next rolling release. It, it just didn't work. Partially rolling does not work. Don't try it. Don't listen to people who think they can do it. It starts off OK, but it will eventually fall over under its own weight. And the ad hoc, ad hoc tinkering of your stable base, which you will have to do to keep the software running, will end up just being a mess. It always is. You, if you're building a complicated software stack and you want to be able to move it quickly in a release, any release format, this is true of distributions or something as complicated as GNOME, if you want to be able to move any part of that stack quickly, you need to be able, able with your tooling, your technology, and your processes to move every single part of that stack quickly. The whole thing, you know, if one, you know, if your latest version of your latest app needs you to change every single library, you've got to have some way of doing it. It's a, it's a high bar to jump, but it is achievable. On the packaging side of, of uh, distributions, in OpenSUSE, we've got the OpenSUSE build service. That's our secret, part of the secret weapon in our game there, you know. Linux Foundation is already using it, own cloud, next cloud. Video LAN and more, you know, building all these different packages, it just simplifies the whole thing. We put the spec files or the dev package comps in there, and away we go. Everything gets built consistently. And we also have, you know, the next sort of weapon in our arsenal being OpenQA, which is testing all of this stuff in a constant, fancy, rolling fashion. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to go into great detail, but you end up with very nice dashboards showing the state of all these different scenarios going into great detail, actually looking at the application from a user's perspective, checking that the screen matches exactly what it's meant to match. So things like UI elements can get caught and noticed. So you're not just taking care of the kind of technical parts of, yeah, okay, there's an OK button there, but it's the right OK button in the right place, looking the right way. And with tools like that, we've tied all of this into one consistent workflow. Every submission goes into our build service. Every submission then gets tested by OpenQA before a human even looks at the code. We'd, we've got basic smoke tests, making sure that the basic installation and the basic GNOME functions are all there working. Then someone looks to see, is it actually worth reviewing the code? Then we put it in our code base where the entire stack is then rebuilt with those changes. That entire stack then gets tested in depth, again, in OpenQA in hundreds more scenarios, and only then do we ship it. That sounds kind of terrifying. Um, and it sounds kind of slow when you first talk about it. You know, everybody I talk to says, oh, I don't want to wait for that build and test on I just want to ship it quicker. With GNOME, we consistently manage to ship every single version of upstream GNOME less than 48 hours after the release. In fact, it was 24 hours last time, and it's you know, getting quicker, generally speaking. That's partly because we're doing all of this live, pulling stuff straight from Git all of the time anyway. So we always know and always able to work with GNOME upstream. So the process works. And not just with GNOME, we do it with you know, KDE releases as well. And we also do it with kernel and, and you know, everything else we can get our hands on. Um, in fact, 
we, uh, he's not here, unfortunately. I think it's his first Guadeloupe in a while he's missed. Dominic, our uh, OpenSUSE uh, release manager for Tumbleweed. He does an announcement at the end of every week saying, you know, this is what we updated in Tumbleweed this week. He made the mistake of saying it was a quiet week once, so I keep on taunting him about it because we updated 146 packages that week, including a whole new kernel. Um, and we did three, effectively three different operating system releases in that week, and that's what he calls quiet. Um, a typical week now is actually, f you know, almost double that. Um, you know, we will basically do one update a week. Completely new distribution, completely new ISOs, refreshing the repos, hundreds of new packages, two or three kernels a week. The process can very easily work, and all of this is powered by ha not that much hardware. It's about four or five boxes doing the open QA testing. Um, and that's just because we have a couple of different architectures. You could probably do it all on one box if you just cared about x 64 The build power is a little bit more complicated, but generally speaking, it's not that hard to do. That's fancy from a developer and a build point of view, but what about the users? They're still having to deal with this ridiculous pace of change of everything going quickly. We're using BTOFS and a very fancy tool we've got sitting on top of it called Snapper which is basically our secret source. Because we're using BTRFS and taking snapshots every time we make a change to the operating system, every package change has a snapshot. So everything a user doesn't like, they can just roll back to what they liked it. Um, and it at least gives some kind of safety blanket so there's no unwanted changes being appeared in there. It also counts as a nice get out of jail free card in the very few times we do miss something in testing because even from Grub, even if we totally brick the machine, which we've, I don't think we've ever done in you know, the last couple of years, you can always get to Grub, roll back, you're fine, you're done. So you can rely on this to actually work. But what about the dev branch, which we used to call OpenSUSE Factory? You know, what are our developers using to now build our regular releases? What are developers now using to actually you know, do all this heavy code on the latest of everything? Well. When you're keeping up with GNOME upstream anyway, and you're always within 24 hours of what's going on, you don't need a development branch anymore. It doesn't make any sense. We merge those two things together. We no longer have an equivalent of Fedora Rawhide. We just use Tumbleweed, which means also our developers are way more productive because they're always using something that works, and they're just dealing with that little bit of package of you know, the thing they're working on themselves. And in the case of our, our regular release in OpenSUSE, it gave us the freedom to kind of go completely in the opposite direction. Because we can move so fast and so stably for all of those users who want something that's moving quickly, on the, on the inverse, we now have a very enterprise-focused community distribution with the SUSE Linux Enterprise base code base in there. And we're building OpenSUSE Leap on top of that which basically generally will defer to the, the, you know, the, the, more sl the slowest option of everything is available there. You know, the latest stable, you know, the, the, you know, the chosen LTS, um, which is really appealing to a completely different demographic of users who just want something that works and is stable and static. And it got rid of this whole back and forth we used to have of trying to find the perfect release schedule and trying to find the perfect you know, thing for you know, those more conservative users. We just give them both and everything is fine and perfectly happy. Mostly. So yeah, we ended up with two different distributions and rolling all of the way. I actually think, though, that the, the long-term future will be everything will be rolling. Um, just because I see things like this, which I don't have enough time to go into great detail, but SUSE Linux Enterprise, the, ent you know, the enterprise code base which we used to start Leap, done from the, the SUSE corporate side, they're basing their new code base on Tumbleweed now. Now, that doesn't mean they're doing a rolling release for enterprise customers yet, but it does mean it isn't that far of a jump away to do so. You know, they, they, you know all, the, all of the SUSE's engineers are having to contribute to t factory first. They're having to contribute to Tumbleweed first. So they all are thinking in the same way, all used to doing things very, very quickly. And then, yeah, the enterprise side is just now picking, really deciding a pace of how slow does it want to roll because the rolling methodology works as a way of delivering even complicated software stacks nice and quick. So in review, because I've run out of time, Tumbleweed, developers, rolling, it's the only way you can really keep up with, rolling, with 
everything that's going out there. You know, it's going to take years before Flatpak and Snappy and all that can do what you can already do in a rolling release when it comes to keeping up with that kind of breadth of software. For upstream developers, if you target Tumbleweed, you're going to get tens of thousands of users running it straight away. In instant. Doesn't, you, know, you can spend ages learning how to do that in Flatpak and Snappy, or you can just do it in RPM with us. Both work. I know, painful one, that one. Um, and yeah, Tumbleweed for users. It just works. It rolls. You get the latest of everything. Why not try it? Lots of people have. And with that, I'm out of time. Thank you very much. <laughs>